right, so one of the things that we're going to talk about today is uh, digital modulation and uh, how those specifications, which are, are come in requirements, uh, how, you know, how do we translate those down into RF specifications? Because generally from uh, uh, the requirements come digital modulation uh, specifications, but however, as RF designers, we use noise figure cascaded, uh, it, we look at intermods, uh, cascaded noise figure, and so forth. But today I'm going to show you a first in the industry technique and where we can actually do EVM estimation. We can help you pinpoint where the EVM errors are and the BER and ACPR errors are. And so this slide just gives a little background in uh, EVM, uh, ACPR, and adjacent channel rejection ratio. So here's part of the problem. As RF designers, we generally use spreadsheets, and those have traditionally been used. However, the requirements really need to be met in the time domain. Uh, usually we're looking at constellation or uh, there's peak to average ratios and other things like that. Well, how do you take a spreadsheet design here and how do you translate that into something that can be used in the, uh, the time domain? There's a lot of problems with the spreadsheets, if you think about it. Uh, they don't account for frequency response, uh, VSWR, uh, what about, um, uh, generally they assume two ports. Uh, what about leakage paths and sneak paths? I mean, it's really just not accounted for in, in a spreadsheet. So what we really need to do is we need to get out of spreadsheets. We need to move into an RF architecture tool. And then we need to make it uh, really easy to make these measurements. Uh, there are time domain simulation tools on the market. Dataflow is a common one, but generally you need to have quite a bit of, you need some DSP background in order to be able to configure your, your simulation to get uh, decent results. And so we want to make it really easy to get those particular results. All right, and so I'm going to show you here where uh, in our simulator tool called Genesis, or in Spectrasys is the RF architecture tool. This actually re resides in Genesis, System View, and also in ADS. And so here this is, it takes the methodology just like, like a signal generator. So we'll specify uh, the modulation here in the signal source. Here's the types of uh, modulations that we support. And then what we do is we extract the RF model and uh, then behind the scenes, we run a data flow simulation and bring the data back in and just simply with the right click uh, on the output of the node, then we can have uh, quick plots for uh, the spectrum. Uh, for the constellation, we even add uh, ACPR results here. So you don't need to have the detailed background in DSP processing and other things like that. And, configuration in order to make this work. All right, so how do we take uh, the requirements, uh, EVM, BER, ACPR, and how do we apply it to our RF design? Uh, because uh, these parts here, are not we don't budget EVM for these type of parts. We want to be careful not to over-specify our blocks. Uh, because that will increase the cost and also underspecify. So how do we do it? Well, we have a simulation technique uh, in our RF architecture tool called SPARCA. It's spectral propagation and root cause analysis. And it does several cool things, but one of the things is that we can measure in-channel signal to intermod ratio, in-channel signal to, to noise ratio, and phase noise ratio. So we take advantage of this. But first, before I go into that, I want to just talk a little bit about a, re a relationship between EB over N0 and uh, signal to noise ratio. So here's the general equ uh, equation. Uh, w here is the bandwidth, R is the data rate. So in the case where uh, the processing gain is one, EB over N0 really equals the in-channel signal to noise ratio. And there's other published papers, I won't go into the detail of this, but EVM is approximated to one over the signal to noise ratio. Now this signal to noise ratio is in channel. 
All right, and so this is what we would see in our RF system tool, and it's pretty easy to see. There's an intermod here, is the gray line. The brown line is the signal. And so we, can, we keep track of uh, the carrier to intermod ratio, uh, the carrier to noise ratio, the carrier to phase noise ratio. And we keep track of all that, that separately. Now there's one other piece if you're doing EVM, and that's channel flatness. So we use some proprietary algorithms uh, created by the instrument group where if we have amplitude and phase variations across a bandwidth that we can run them through these algorithms and we can estimate what the channel flatness is. And this is pretty good. And it's a lot faster than uh, a data flow simulation which takes knowledge to run uh, but this is all done in the RF domain. So it's very quick and, and this right here is all done in the RF domain. All right, now for adjacent channel power uh, rejection. Uh, we have developed a patent pended, pending technique where we can use a frequency comb and we can simulate hundreds of carriers and intermods in a fraction of a second. And uh, so it's really fast. And so from that we can actually look at uh, the regrowth. And here we see carrier triple beats and these are third order intermods and, and different combinations of the intermods are the colors here. But we can plot ACPR on a level diagram and you can see the, uh, the blocks here. And so we can immediately see the stages that are contributing to the ACPR instead of just the pass fail criteria which is generally what happens when you're using a time domain uh, type of simulator. You either, it either passes or it fails. All right, so how do we do BER estimation? Well, we use this function that, that MATLAB has, which is BERAWGN, and it takes in an argument of EB over N0, which is the same thing as the signal-to-noise ratio and the modulation type. So since we know in-channel signal-to-noise ratio, we can estimate what the BER is without taking a long time to simulate. All right, so here's a little video, uh, just a little teeny video clip that we'll play, and I'll just talk over it. So uh, here's our source, which is uh, like uh, a signal generator. Those are the types of modulations that, that we support for uh, the data flow simulation that runs behind the scenes. And in order to get results, you right click. Now we're, we're, we're jumping a little bit. Here we're showing estimation. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this later. but. Here you see estimation on a level diagram. We're going to go ahead and change a parameter, re-simulate, and see the effect of the estimation. So here we, we saw the, the uh, results there. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Well, uh, we'll talk about it now, I guess. So this was our design. And you should know that there's a, a digital modulation simulation that runs behind the scenes. And there's also estimation. And estimation just needs RF sources. Uh, and so it runs really fast. Uh, here's the ACPR, but on this level diagram, the top line is, uh, the, the red is the total EVM. And the orange line is EVM due to channel flatness, and the green line is due to intermods. And we're not simulating with, with respect to phase noise in this case, or the thermal noise that's down here. So if we were to look at this level diagram, we can immediately tell that this IF filter right here is the leading problem for our EVM. And then we do see some uh, contributions from Intermod here, a little bit in the channel flatness due to the VSWR of this filter, and then also in the power amp. So as a designer, you can look at this, you can make adjustments here immediately and make trade-offs to figure out what's the best, uh, what's the best performance. All right, so one of the things that we did here is we did uh, some hardware simulation. And what we took was an IF filter. This is a Sawtech uh, 300, uh, or an IF filter at 380 megahertz. And then we've got two Hittite amplifiers separated by uh, a pad here. And so this is our test equipment uh, setup. And so what we're really doing in this particular case is 
uh, we're measuring the hardware with 64 QAM and we're going to measure the results but also we did simulation in the data flow simulator and we also did estimation. So it's pretty complicated and I'm not going to go into the details of all this but I'll show you here in the graph. So, so the graphic behind this, the, the big window here, is the VSA software from Agilent, which actually runs on uh, Agilent equipment, or can, can, uh, you can use it with System View. And so these are measured results. This is a measured result. And the EVM up here is a measured result. It's about, I think, about 1.1. This right here is a data flow simulation. This is a data flow simulation. And then this is an estimation. So the estimation runs really fast. We can see that uh, most of the EVM is due to this IF filter at this particular power level. Uh, and here's the ACPR estimation. Here's the measured results. Here's the estimation. So then we went ahead and uh, we increased the power a little bit. So now what do you see? You see a little more distortion in the constellation. Uh, we see the spectral regrowth come up. Uh, once again, our estimation, which is super fast, uh, that's also come up and corresponds. This is the data flow simulation. But notice here, we're getting contributions uh, in the EVM due to the intermods, in-channel intermods at the last stage. Now we're going to do one other thing, and we're going to increase uh, the power level again. Uh, to 5 dBm, and all of a sudden you start to see the distortions in the constellation. Here's the simulation results. Uh, this is the measured results, simulation results, and now we see uh, a large contributor to the EVM is this final power amplifier. Not the first one, but this last one here, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, so I think the, the measured EVM is about four and a half. Uh, the estimated EVM is uh, a little over five and a half. So it's not going to be exact, but the estimation helps, helps us decide where we're going to make the trade-offs and where we're going to make the changes. So in summary, what I've shown you is just an easy way to set up a data flow simulation. We don't need to be DSP experts. And, uh, and what's unique uh, that no one else has been able to do is show you EVM and BER and ACPR on a level diagram so you can make trade-offs. Uh, thank you.